Hey everyone, Jamie here from technicalcafe.com. Welcome to your 15th HTML tutorial. In the last tutorial we talked about adding backgrounds to our pages, both plain old color backgrounds, and then we talked about adding image backgrounds to our web pages. Um, so in this tutorial we're going to be talking something about something a little different, and that's going to be creating HTML forms. And what a form does is it just takes information from the user and it sends it over to another page, um, provided that's what you want it to do. Um, so here's an example of a form. You've probably seen these all over the internet. Uh, it's a standard login form where you take a username and password and uh, then you click login and it'll send it over to a page to actually log the user in. So now let me just show you how it works here. So for our username I'll enter my name, Jamie, and the password I'll just say password. And you'll notice here that the username is actually in text and the password has uh, bullet dots so that you can't see what it is should somebody be standing over your shoulder or something like that. Um, and there's actually a way to tell the form that that's what you want it to be. So it's just uh, if we click login here, it'll take us to the uh, process.php page, and I haven't actually created one, so it's going to say the file isn't found. Um, but if you did create a page, you could then do all sorts of things with the username and password information that was submitted. Um, and another thing that I want you to keep in mind is that we use the post form of submitting, and what that does is it basically sends it without displaying it in the URL. The other form is get. And now we'll talk about those a little bit more in a couple minutes, but Let's get into the code here so you can see what's going on here. Okay, so this is the code for the uh, password and username form that we have here. Um, so what we have here is we have the form and a couple attributes, um, and then we have the three different inputs with the button being one of the inputs. So um, let's just clear this out here and save it. Come over here and refresh, and I'll take you through how to set up a form. So we'll create our HTML tags here. Come through with our body next. And then we'll add our header on top of that. Our title. And we'll call this creating HTML forms. We'll save that and we'll come down and we'll add our we'll add a header here in H3. And we'll call this creating HTML forms. Just to you know provide a little bit of information. So I'll come over here and refresh, and here's our title, and here's our header. Um, so let's get into actually creating the form itself. So uh, one of the other things that you noticed that when we had the form up was that we had uh, some text that said, please log in. So let's go ahead and add that. So we'll say, uh, we'll use a paragraph tag, and we'll say, please log in below. So we'll save that, come over here and refresh, and here's our please log in below. So uh, let's actually start creating the form that we can use to log the user in. And uh, you don't have to make, create a login form, you can create whatever you want. Um, but in this tutorial, I'm just going to show you the basics of uh, how to create a form. And uh, I think the login form is probably the most recognizable because they're all over the place. Um, you can also do like a contact form or other types of forms. So um, let's just come over here. And the way we're going to create a form is we're going to use a set of tags um, called the form tags. And um, it's similar to the, how, to, how you cr we'd create a list with the UL or OL. Um, so with a form, there's going to be an opening form tag and a closing form tag, and anything between these two tags is going to be uh, the information for the form. So it's going to contain the form fields, uh, any buttons, and any text that you're going to include within the form. So it's similar to a list in the aspect that uh, you kind of outline what you want to do, and then anything in the list would go between the two list tags. So it's similar to that. So let's just go ahead and save this, come over and refresh, and you'll notice that there's nothing on the page. And this is because we haven't actually added any uh, anything to our form. We just said that we're going to be creating one. So let's come in here, and um, one of the first things we're going to do, uh, like we did in our form previously, is we're going to create a text field. And what we're going to do is we're going to call this, uh, this is based on how we would go about creating one, would be used saying input type equals text. And this is basically it. This is how you would create a text box. Um, so you'd use the input tag, and then you'd add, within that input tag, you would add an attribute type. Now this is just specifying the type of input that you want. You can have a password input, uh, you can have a button input, you can have a text input. Um, so let's go ahead and say text, because that's what we want. And we'll just come over here and just add a little uh, forward slash to indicate that we're closing it. Uh, you don't need to do that. You don't need a closing tag on this either. It's just one tag uh, input, unlike these two here. But uh, I just added there just because it's kind of a good convention to have, I guess. So let's go ahead and save this. Come over here to our page and refresh. And you'll notice that now we have a text box, and we can enter in, you know, whatever we want in this text box. You can enter in a however much data you want, um, and there is a way that we can go about 
uh, limiting how much data we put in, but uh, for this tutorial, we're not going to worry about doing that. So we have our box. So what we're going to do is we're going to call it, we're going to create a name for it, and we're going to create it and call it username. So we'll save that, come over here, and you can see that we have a username box. Um, so the next thing we're going to do is create the same thing, but for a password. Um, so we'll come down here and we'll say password, and then we'll uh, add a little colon there, and we're going to use the same exact tag, input, uh, we'll just create a slash, but instead of using the type equals text attribute, we're going to use the type equals, and we're going to say password. Um, you can still use the text if you want to, if you're creating a different type of form, like a contact form, and you want to include maybe an email address, uh, you can use text, but for the purpose of a password, it's good to use the password uh, type for the attribute. Um, that way the words get uh, masked as um, bullet points. So we'll save that, come over here, and we'll refresh, and you'll notice that we have our username, a box for our username, and then a password in box for the password. Um, the difference is here, if we type it ASDF, and we type it in the password field, um, the password blocks it out so that nobody can see what you're actually typing. Okay, so let's come over here and uh, going to add a button. So for the button, what we need to do um, is just we're going to create another input type. So basically using the input tab tag in the type attribute, and I will close that. And for the to create a button, all you need to do is create uh, just type in submit, and uh, it's going to create a submit button. So if we save that. Uh, we come back over to our Firefox and refresh. You'll notice that we have um, our username box, our password box, and our submit button. And uh, if you click the submit button, uh, nothing's going to happen. So if we type in some information here, in the password, password, uh, we'll submit the query, and you'll still notice that nothing happens. The boxes just get uh, blanked out, and Firefox asks if I'd like to remember the password. Um, so what we're going to do first is we're going to actually change the name of this uh, of this button from submit query to login. Uh, submit query is just the default, um, but since we're creating a login script, we're going to basically change it to login. So what we're going to do is add another attribute to the input tag. Um, so we're going to say name or value rather equals, and then uh, some parentheses and it's a, a quotation marks rather. And remember, it's important to add the quotation marks, um, especially if you're using other programming languages than HTML because uh, it might not work correctly. So we're going to say uh, log in. Save that. Come over and take a look, and you'll notice that our button changed to log in. Uh, it still has the same function of doing nothing, um, and uh, that's just because we haven't told it to do anything yet. So, uh, what we're going to do over here, just to set up the uh, input types. Um, so, first, we you'll notice that we had our form, um, and it was actually sending us to the process.php page. Um, and I was actually on the W3 Schools website a little earlier. And, uh, they were using .asp for their example, but for our, our example here, we're going to be using PHP. Uh, so basically what we're going to do is we're going to say form, we're going to add another attribute to the form tag, the top form tag, and we're going to say action equals, and then some uh, quotation marks here. And what the action does is it's basically telling the browser what page to send the data in this form. So basically the, the input type text that's going to send whatever text you enter in this box, whatever uh, characters you enter for the password, to another web page where you can do things with it. Perhaps uh, add it to a MySQL database or uh, display it to the user or something like that. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be uh, telling the, the form or the browser where to send this information. Um, and I haven't actually created the process.php page, um, but we'll just create one anyway. And now this, this can differ depending on what your page, uh, what you're using. If you're using ASP, um, it's going to obviously be something else. Or if you name the page something different, um, it's going to be something else. So if we save this and come over here to our page and refresh, and we click on the login button, you'll notice that it now takes us to the process.php page. So it's basically going to send the data from these two, uh, these two inputs to the process.php page, which hasn't been created yet. That's why we're getting a file not found, but have had it been created, it would have been sent over there. So let's say we enter in some text here, uh, and we'll say our password is the word password. Uh, never a good idea, but we'll create it that way. And we click login, nothing will happen. So let's come back to our code here, and uh, we're going to add a couple more attributes to the, um, to the username and password fields here. So after the text attribute, we're going to type in name equals, and then some quotation marks. And the name attribute is basically going to be 
uh, used for when you send it to another page. So when we send it to the PHP page, uh, login or process.php for uh, for example, um, it's going to be we're going to be trying to we might want to store these values into var variables in PHP. Um, and this might sound confusing, so don't worry about it. You're not uh, this tutorial isn't really based on PHP, but I'm just kind of showing you how to set it up um, for when you do decide to go about learning PHP if that's something you're interested in. So we're going to give this name. Uh, we're going to call it username. So Basically, when this gets sent to the PHP process.php page, uh, it's going to be able you're going to be able to identify it and grab the information by calling it username. If you called it uh, input pass username or um, name, you can call it whatever you want as long as you remember to use the same input name on the PHP page. So we're going to do that, and for the password, we'll do the same thing. Use our name attribute and call it password, and we'll save that. Come over here and refresh. Uh, enter in our information and we'll log in and you'll notice now that we give it that we've given it a name that it'll say uh, pro process.php question mark username equals Jamie and password equals password so this is actually using a get method to send it to the process.php page and now these are the names that we created username and password within our code here and uh, this is what's actually going to be sent to the page uh, where we can do whatever we want with it. So let's go back to our page here and we'll refresh it. Let's get my name out of there. So then we'll come back here to our code here and we're also going to give our, our submit button a name um, and it's not going to show up. It's not going to really be used for much right now uh, but we'll call it submit and um, in PHP later on you might want to check to see if the submit button's actually been clicked and you can do that by grabbing the submit name here. So um, this is basically how you go about creating a basic HTML form um, for right now, if you're going to use it, you're not going to really need the name attributes here. Um, but this it's up to you whether to use it. When you start using PHP or maybe some JavaScript, um, these might come in handy. And now one other thing that I want to go over here is another attribute for the form tag. Um, and that's actually going to be the, the method equals. And then some quotation marks. And this attribute is basically saying how the data from the form is going to be sent to the process.php page here. So the method that we've been using here, the Jamie and we're enter password here, is actually a get method uh, because the username and uh, password are both shown in the URL here. And you'll notice I actually spelled password wrong. Um, but they're shown in the URL and for the example of sending a password you don't really want it to be shown in the URL um, because if someone's standing behind you or looks in your history or something uh, they can see that your password is password. So what we can do to prevent that is use a post method um, so you enter in post right here, save it, come back to your form here, refresh, and we'll say our password is password, and we'll click login. And you'll notice that it gets sent without adding anything to the URL, um, so that way nobody can see what your username or password is, or see what information is in the URL. So it's just a different thing you want to do. There's different examples or different uses for get and post, uh, you know, depending on what you're trying to do with your website. So that's basically how to go about creating a simple form. It might seem confusing at first, but once you get the hang of it and start doing it, uh, it gets easier and easier. So uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to post them in the comments. You can send me an email uh, by using the contact page on Technical Cafe, and that's actually a form uh, using the post method, I believe, to send it to my email address. And you can also use uh, Twitter. Send me a tweet, JamieMCG, on Twitter. Uh, you can use the Technical Cafe Twitter, which is twitter.com slash technicalcafe. Um, or you can just leave a comment below. So uh, thank you for watching and have a great day.